Hello and welcome to our very first session on University Pathways. My name is Vipasha and I have here with me Hannah Thompson, who's our University and Career Guidance Counselor at International Eden House International School Orchard. Now this is an important journey for every student, but as we know, it really depends. Every journey is unique because every child is unique and therefore the context is unique. You might have children who decide in their secondary years or perhaps in their primary years what they want to do and there could be others who are undecided even in their undergraduate years. But having said that, there are certain common questions that a lot of families have right at the beginning of this journey and we are hoping today that we can address some of those questions and with Hannah's guidance and expertise, uh, some of that information will help you in this very meaningful and rewarding journey with your children. So let's dive straight in. Thank you, Hannah, for being with us today. I know it's a busy, busy day every day in school. Yes. And uh, yeah, and you were talking about uh, the students making their choices for uh, the year 12 IB uh, subject choices. So thank you so much for being here, for spending your afternoon with us. My pleasure. And OK, so diving straight in, um, and this is probably a question that you get asked very often. When do families and students start to think about this process? What is the right time to begin? Um, so I definitely, going back to what you were just saying about it being an individual journey, it does really depend on the individual student. Um, everyone's pathway looks different, there's no right or wrong, and I think that's really important to emphasise. Um, but essentially students are beginning their kind of planning and their development right from very early years. They're developing their skills, they're developing their passions and interests, and it really is particularly pre-secondary school for students to, to develop what do they enjoy, what do they like doing outside of school, inside of school, and then once they get to secondary school, uh, most schools and particularly at Eaton House Orchard, we then start a more formal careers education pathway. So students then are more um, prepared to reflect on what they're good at, what their strengths are, what skills they already have and which skills they need to develop. And then also looking at really from that point of view, starting to make those education pathway choices. So clearly students are making choices for their IGCC subjects. And then recently we've just been working with our year 11 students on making their IB pathway uh, subjects. And year 11 students are, are really the focus of the beginning of our formal university pathway. So those subject choices are really the start of what then becomes quite an intensive university programme from year 12. Okay, so you're saying around year seven is when the formal sort of pro, uh, the program starts. Yes, yeah. Right. So it, it builds. Our program is progressive. So students are, are gradually building year on year, formally recognizing what they're good at, their skills and interests, through to more um, specific careers and university management planning. Right, right. And most students by that age typically would know what they're good at, would be able to. <laughs> <laughs> it's very common um, yeah. and you know it's, it's not of a concern if students are not really clear on what they want to do. Um, the, the core of our programme is really reflection on themselves, finding right. out what they prioritise, what their values are, what career success might look to them and their mm -hmm. family, because mm -hmm. again it really varies. Yes. Um, so it's, it's more about an internal reflection to start with and then as they get towards subject choices and then eventually potentially university applications, that is when then more formal guidance comes right. in if they're right. still uncertain at that stage. Yeah, that's helpful to know. And uh, families, when do, when do parents come into this process? <laughs> um, all the way through. Okay. Um, I'd say more formally, particularly at those education choices moments. Um, we have parents' evenings at regular stages. The parent-teacher conferences are always a great opportunity to, to communicate with our team. Um, and then particularly in the IB years, I'm in regular contact along with our diploma coordinator. Right, brilliant. And so typically, I, I would say the most popular uh, options are either the US or the UK, and they're two very, very different. Um, and most families may or may not have a preference for any either of them. They may be open to both. Uh, so could you just give us like a macro bird's eye view of what are the kind of differences between the two pathways mm -hmm. so that, you know, parents kind of have a better idea when they embark on that process? Yeah, um, so there's always exceptions. Mm -hmm, of course. <laughs> so there's always a disclaimer there. But essentially the US and the UK, you can think of them at kind of opposite ends of a spectrum of university choices. 
So the US is more um, breadth of education and the UK is more depth. Mm -hmm. So the US is really fantastic as an opportunity for students that want to maintain that flexibility in their education, that want to continue exploring different subject areas. It's um, approximately half of all students applying to the US apply undeclared. Mm -hmm. So they've not specified a particular subject that they want to study yet. They're keeping all of their options open. Right. Um, whereas the UK is more or less the opposite to that in that most universities expect students to really specifically apply to a particular subject area and as part of the application process actually evidence why they would be a successful candidate for that particular subject. Right. Um, so that's why, for example, in the UK you can study medicine at the undergraduate level straight from high school, where in contrast in the US there's the pre-med pathway, so right. students would take the four-year bachelor's before going on to graduate medicine. Okay. okay. So, so what happens with the subject choices, you know, if you have a student who's undecided right up to your, you know, you, you of course choose your IB uh, subjects or your A-level subjects, but they're not sure, particularly in terms of their career options and therefore the subject choices as mm -hmm. well as they go forward. Uh, what would you, you know, how have you come across the situation and how does that work in terms of supporting yeah, these absolutely. students? Absolutely. So um, for, for very focused countries like the UK where there may be prerequisites, um, obviously we guide students on an individual basis mm -hmm. as to what they're currently enjoying in their subjects at IGCC level mm -hmm. as well as where they're performing really mm -hmm. strongly. So mm -hmm. it's a mix of the you know, achievements and interests and enjoyment, um, but also students thinking long term, we have a, a full range of guidance as to what universities typically might look for, um, lists of prerequisites, but the beauty of the IB programme in particular is that it is that breadth of education, so it's unusual that students might completely shut off all door or all mm -hmm. opportunities mm -hmm. available mm -hmm. because of the breadth of the, the programme. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and uh, you know when when you're talking about um, giving advice to families, uh, I know you said that the formal process starts at the secondary level, and also the actual applications probably happen in year twelve, um, the last two years. Uh, but if you were to give some advice to families who are early on, um, so maybe a primary uh, student or um, you know somebody who's you know who's even a, a preschool uh, family who's who's very young but they want to get started so that they know which milestones to look out for in this process, what would you say to them? Um, I'd say firstly, from the point of view of developing interests, students should be doing what they enjoy at that particular point in their education and all the way through actually. So students that are you know, developing hobbies or extracurriculars, if they find something that they're really passionate about, it's really developing that as much as possible and when they get further along in their educational journey, so towards the end of secondary school, particularly then focusing on key uh, passions or key interests so that they can demonstrate things like commitment, the impact that they're having in those particular interests, and then eventually, hopefully, leadership qualities, mm -hmm. um, particularly US universities are very, you know, those are sought after mm -hmm. attributes in okay. students. Okay. Um, but essentially reaching out to, to schools to the teaching team, to, to people like myself, um, there's a huge amount of resources and, and help uh, essentially at the school. And do you recommend that they start documenting some of this outside of school, their interests, but you know, you could have your child play in various tournaments, but you don't really document it, especially, um, you know, it's, it's just part of the process. But do you recommend doing that for children as young as primary? Um, or? So really from an early age, it's, it, I wouldn't, I'd, say anything above and beyond what most families yeah. would do, keeping yeah. certificates of any achievements, generally, you know, reflecting. But when it comes to secondary school students, particularly towards the, the last few years of high school, um, this is something that's part of the careers programme. So really reflecting on what interests and hobbies students might have, but more specifically what skills and attributes they're gaining from that. What are they learning? What mm. soft skills, transferable mm. skills have mm. they got? 
um, because that is crucial then for mm -hmm. when they're preparing their mm -hmm. university applications. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. That obviously means that the universities are looking for beyond just your grades. They're looking at s something else. They're looking at the personality of the individual to see if that's the right fit. So that's yeah, great to absolutely. know. Absolutely. Yeah. And particularly in the US, because of the US's holistic admissions process, they are really looking for students that are well-rounded and not just focusing on their academic grades. Mm -hmm. um, so US universities are really looking for students that can demonstrate they've had a long-term commitment in some of their outside school mm -hmm. interests. Mm -hmm. They've made an impact mm -hmm. and they've gained from those mm -hmm. experiences. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully towards the end of their high schooling, actually develop leadership skills as well. Because the US universities, one of their criteria will be, you know, what is the student bringing to our campus? Yes. Not just necessarily what, what do they want to get out yes. of the university yes. experience. Yes. Brilliant. Um, and you have obviously uh, the IB program that's absolutely well primed in order to develop those skills outside of the classroom. So absolutely. that's outstanding. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're very fortunate that it's it's such a fantastic program with the CAS, the Creativity Activity Service, mm -hmm. as well as the Theory of Knowledge and yeah. Extended Essay. That yeah. core component is a really useful transition for students to, to be well prepared for university. And of course, we're very fortunate to have you, Hannah, and, and the students uh, with your amazing guidance and your very uh, hands-on learning uh, and you know, your ability to guide our families and our students on their uh, path uh, to success onwards and upwards. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope you found this information useful. We will come out with more content, of course, uh, but this is just the beginning of how we want to support our families to move on to their next milestone, that is their university placements and pathways. Thank you so much, Hannah. My pleasure. Thank you so much.